every day in the retail market. Hundreds, literally millions of items are bought for the Thomaswood Railway Line. Millions more sold on websites like eBay, Amazon, and various shopping websites. Many people strive and fight for the right to own these items, rare or not rare. Today we'll follow the journey of one true man and his adventure is going to follow. This is The Surprise Inside. Hello guys and welcome back to yet again another installment of The Surprise Inside. I know they're kind of um... Oh, I know how you guys feel about them. You know, always doing spies and sides. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're not really this popular video, but, you know, I enjoy doing them. And it's just nice quick videos to get out when I don't have time to film anything. So, if you may have noticed, there has been a lack in content since I uploaded my last remake. In fact, if you notice, we're still in the set of my last remake, technically, and the last surprise and set. The reason why I haven't done much is because I've just been kind of busy. Well... I had a trip that I just went on that I came back on, so I'm going to be working. So I'm going to be finishing these next two remakes, and I'm going to start working on my big movie that I've been keep talking about. And I hope you guys enjoy that movie. So, while I was on vacation, I got two things, and today I got something in the mail. So while I was on vacation, there was a little store that I found that was a model shop, hobby shop. And I thought, oh, maybe they have some Thomas Wooden Railway. Actually, I knew they had Thomas on the Railway because last year, when I went on the same trip, um, I walked into that store. I didn't buy anything because I was like nervous about people in my school seeing stuff, but this year I decided to go, I slipped out discreetly to buy the stuff. So the first thing I got was Iron Airy and Iron Bird. So I'm going to take these out of the packaging. I already opened the box, actually. So here they are. I've really... Contrary to most people and what they think, I really like these, like these models. I think they do a good job of capturing Aryan Burt. My only issue... is that, in my opinion, I don't think they look intimidating enough, enough to be Aryan Burt. You know, we've had that whole tough guy Aryan Burt from the early two, from the um, from the mid two thousands that you know people like, but that tends to be the more common model. But I kind of like these too. I feel like if you switch the faces to like maybe one day I'll get a bunch of get another pair of Aryan Burts from that era. And then slip their stick faces on these. And use these. Because I do like these models. I'm probably not going to use them in my series. But I do really like the look. Of Aerie and Burt 2013 versions. And the reason why I bought them actually. Is because. One. They're actually retired. And I don't. I'm actually not surprised about that. Because. I mean how often does Mattel use these two. Or not Mattel. Excuse me. Art. Andrew Brenner and his crew, I mean, I've been seeing Aerie and Burt have a actual role since season 16, actually. And ever since then, they haven't done much in the show, so... I guess these that's why the models aren't selling well. Um, if you can tell, like, um, previous versions and other things Aerie, of um, these models, Aerie has less stubble than Burt, so that's how you tell them apart. Other than that, they're pretty much identical. I just don't understand though why people think these models are actually ugly. I really do like the look of these. These are really nice models. Alright, so we're gonna clear these off clear these two guys off the camera table. Oh, another thing that I found kind of interesting was that it actually came with a 2013 pamphlet. And I'll keep that one. Maybe. I don't know. So the next item we're going to show off from the store, and the other one I got, was a 2013 Birdie. Now, funny story about this. A little thing that I've always kind of found interesting. 
Well, not really fun. Interesting. It's just something that's kind of weird. That this is technically my first Wind Rally birdie, because my other birdie is actually a Tommy birdie, and I just never really bothered to get a Wind Rally one. I don't know why. I just never bought it. So this is technically my first Wind Rally birdie. It's a nice model, honestly. It resembles more of the. Let me put this on the road, actually. Resembles more of the style of um, the later birdie. You know what doesn't have anybody in its cab? Honest, it's not my favorite version of birdie. I would have to say my favorite version would have to be the 90s version. You know, with the people and the guys smoking the pipe. So. cool thing about the store that I went to though is that the um there was actually a couple items in there that are actually decent that I was at, I would actually consider or I wouldn't say rare just like you don't see them out and like they had a fearless freddy they had a couple of like late Tommy or I guess you would say late earning curve Tommy items they had like a Henry from that era and they had giggling troublesome trucks with that sound for like ten dollars I was considered buying them and I was like you know what I have enough killing troublesome trucks um, they had like a bunch of older things, I'm trying to think about them. That it kinda, I was thinking about grabbing, but I was like, I already have these, so I just picked these two models, because I don't really, ha I don't have these models, and I do want them. Right, so we're going to move on to our next thing, right after this. Alrighty, guys. And here, we have another package. Now, I ordered this, actually, off of eBay around the same time that I ordered the other stuff I got recently, like my Erdl mail van and my Patty's car. I didn't order the um, elevated expansion pack that was given to, that was bought by my dad. And so this was ordered around the same time. This is mid-April. It is now the 2nd of May, and it just came because it came all the way from China. So, a bunch of you are like, uh-oh, what did he buy? Well, I know a lot, a lot of people are a fan of these because people do consider them to be relatively, I wouldn't use the word, I wouldn't use the word dangerous. I'd use the word, you know, unsafe. They're not the best models to get if you're looking to try to get to your yard. And they are these knockoff Marion coaches. So we're going to get these out of their little packaging. Oof. So here they are out of package. Now one thing to note is that I'm not saying that they're dangerous at all, but I'm saying knockoffs aren't necessarily the best thing to go for in terms of buying TWR. But I bought these because they were cha cheap. Ugh, can't talk today. Cheap. There we go. They were cheap. And I was just like, you know what? It's cheaper than waiting to try to get at least one narrative coach from the wind rally line. Because, you know, those are expensive. So, they're my narrative coaches. And, one thing I look off right off the bat is you just really can tell these are knockoffs. For example, shoddy paint job here. And it just feels different. The texture kind of feels like... It kind of feels like, you know, like the, like, not even touch, it feels like tu not even touching a 92 item. It really just feels like cheap paint, doesn't feel like good quality. Lots of chips on the side. See, we have more chipping stuff. This doesn't, it just feels like they put like a very thin coat on. 
yeah so um it's not the most again I saying that you should go out and buy them because they're cheap but I know a lot of people in the community use them my recommendation is if you're gonna buy knockoffs don't try to go for don't try to buy like you don't want to buy knockoffs that are like uh, I'm trying to think Ugh, can't think. If you're trying to buy knockoffs, there we go. I wouldn't try to go for engines in specifics. I would mainly go for rolling stock, because the rolling stock, in my opinion, seems to be a bit better than, you know, the, what we have in the engines, because I mean, I've seen plenty of times people have done reviews and they talk about how knockoffs are breakable and all these issues with them. And I'm not saying I'm going to support the market. I just bought these, because I mean, they're cheap and stuff and they do look pretty good now I've heard that these do not fit well in tunnels but to be honest I don't really care and to model our new coaches oops, gotta get them turned around will be Reneus so Reneus is going to model our energy coaches you already tell you can clearly see that they are taller than him because Renaeus's cab is here and the coach goes up around another couple millimeters but other than that you know there's nothing too bad about these coaches I'm just going to be careful whenever I use them in particular I'm going to wash my hands for safety I'm not saying that you know think like they're extremely dangerous and you're gonna get, like die or something because sometimes knockoffs can have been known to have lead paint but I want to say is it's just better to be safe than sorry personally what should you go out and buy knockoffs on a regular basis probably not buy them if you're going to buy them buy like be smart with them like if you're going to buy like buy express coaches buy like the knockoff express coaches or old slow coach or something that's like reasonable for you to buy don't just buy a knockoff to destroy because I mean what's the point of doing that you're wasting your own money so I'm gonna put everything together now that we've gotten kind of try to turn the turn there we go so guys thank you for watching this installment of the surprise inside thank you guys for watching and there will be, there should be more to come. See you around.